Hello, Opal. It's Frank. Did the man give you the divorce papers? Opal, you can call me anything you want to. You always have. You know, you you cussed me ever since we've been married and called me every name in the book. And you know that I've never raised my voice to you, and I'm not going to today. No, I'm not going to get mad at you. I just can't live with you anymore. You know, I never would have married you, Opal, but Daddy never would let us go with any girls. And I married the first girl I met. And that was you. Yeah, simmer down a little. Believe me, I did what I had to do. Don't make me go into it. You can have everything we've got: a house, a car, money in the bank, the muffler shop. Sell it. Do anything you want to do with it. Let's call it quits. We both made a mistake, and let's just drop it. Now I'm getting a little tired of this abuse, Opal. I called you because I thought it was the thing to do. I just quieted down a little bit. Okay, 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 Opal. Remember, you ask me. I'm gonna tell you. I guess it all came to a head that night at open house over at the Coopers. I begged you to buy a new evening dress for that occasion, but no, no, you wouldn't do it. You had to wear that old faded formal that you wore to your last high school prom. I was so pretty in this dress, and all the boys wanted to dance with me, and they kept trying to get me to go outside. Oh, I got sick of hearing you tell that over and over. You know the top of that dress. Kept falling down, and I kept pulling it up. You know the years kind of take their toll on us, Opal. It wasn't as much indecent as it was sickening. No wonder it kept falling down. Not only was it a strapless gown, and at your age, but because you were half drunk when you put the dress on, you didn't put anything under it. In your hair, women just don't wear waves and ringlets anymore. You ask me now, Opal. Well, then a couple of days later, when I was talking to that insurance man, and you kept stumbling into the room there and interrupting, why, Opal, that man didn't want any more of your fudge. And another thing, did you ever notice? How that when you walked through the house, you just kind of stomped. Yeah, you just stomped along. Oh, I used to hate to walk anywhere with you. And and when you would drink out of a glass or a, a cup or whatever, you just kind of sucked it out and made made that funny sound. Oh, it used to disgust me. I wanted to hit you right in the mouth. You ask me. Well, Opal, there, there are a lot of other things. And in fact, in the last five years, I don't think you've done anything that didn't either make me mad or sick. Well, I'm on my way to the remote part of Alaska. I'll be living in an igloo up there by myself, 200 miles from the nearest town. I'll be working for the government, and I'll be spotting aircraft that flies over. They say the yearly average is about seven. Once a year, now I go to Point Barra and report at the relay station. Rest of the time, I'll be out there in that igloo by myself. And I'm looking forward to it. Last man that had the job went crazy and beat his head against the igloo till he died. That won't happen to me. I can take anything. Well, Opal. Keep your old chin up. By the way, that—that's another thing, Opal. 
did you ever notice when you when you talk that you kind of drew your chin back and you, your lips got tight and thin and you, your neck all wrinkled up? Boy, oh, I, I wanted to bust you every time you did that. I knew if I did, I, I wouldn't be able to stop. Well, again, I remind you, Opal, you ask me. Everything you did was wrong. You couldn't do anything right. And now maybe I'll, I'll finally have a little, little peace of mind. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck.